Some people aren't content to just relax and let their body be what it naturally wants to be. Some people insist on dieting and exercising to the extreme in order to get the most out of their body, turning themselves into powerhouses of muscle mass. And over the years, they push themselves until they are unrecognizable. These are mass monsters in bodybuilding, then and now. Number 15. Arnold Schwarzenegger Out of all bodybuilders, Arnold Schwarzenegger is one who has one of the most impressive then and now differences. Even though he's 70 years old, he still works out and manages to maintain at least some of his impressive physique. Of course, age is against him and he'll never look as good as he did in the peak of his bodybuilding career. But still, looking back at his career and then comparing it to what he's like today is pretty amazing. While he was all about gaining those impressive titles like Mr. Olympia, he has a far more varied resume today. He has appeared in several films in what has been an extremely lucrative acting career. He has also been involved in politics, serving as the governor of California from 2003 to 2011. Today, Arnold is an actor, filmmaker, author, businessman, and an ambassador for bodybuilding. There's almost nothing this man hasn't done. First prize. He started lifting weights at age 15 and had clinched the Mr. Universe title by the age of 20. He then won Mr. Olympia an impressive seven times before getting involved in the film world with his remarkable bulk in the 1980s. Like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Tom Prince To look at Tom Prince today, you'd hardly believe he used to be an NPC Nationals champion. He just looks like anyone else, and why exactly that is might just surprise you. Yeah, I remember Tom Prince last year. Man, look at that physique. In his heyday, Tom was an American professional bodybuilder with an IFBB Pro card. He won this after his first placing at the 1997 NPC National Championships. He also placed second in the NPC Nationals and USA Championships, and placed highly in Knight of Champions, Ironman Pro Invitational, and the Grand Prix England. But all these competitions take a toll. During his off-season, he would weigh 312 pounds. To get to his competition weight of 230 pounds, he had to drop over 80 pounds. Many bodybuilders achieve such weight loss through severe dehydration. This ultimately led to the version of Tom Prince you see today. His kidneys began to fail and he had to retire. It was no longer safe for Tom to compete. Now, he's been married for over 25 years and moved into the real estate management business. He also has kidney dialysis treatment three days per week. The once 312 pound man sits at a healthy 185 pounds. Number 13. Mustafa Mohammed. Mustafa Mohammed is a bit of an enigma in the bodybuilding world. While many bodybuilders enjoy a long career and then retire, Mustafa chose to come in and out of retirement with no one knowing where he disappeared to for lengths of time. When he joined the bodybuilding world, he showed promise. Outside of the IFBB, he had already won two world titles by the time he was in his 20s. But then he retired and no one saw much of him for nearly a decade. After nine years, he was still quite a muscly chap and started competing again. But he never quite reached the same heights he had achieved early on. He lived in Australia, raised three children with his wife, and focused on running his gym. When he made his IFBB Pro debut as a 35-year-old in 2001, he never made too much of an impact. 
In the two dozen competitions he entered between 2001 and 2006, he never placed higher than third place. Over half a dozen times, he never even placed in the top 10. Number 12. Dorian Yates The Dorian Yates you see today is far, far removed from the one you would have seen in the early 1990s. A lot has changed for this former bodybuilder. Dorian was 30 years old when he first entered Mr. Olympia in Helsinki, Finland. He pulled off the perfect double bicep pose and clinched the win that came with a $100,000 cash prize. That win was the first of six, and this mass monster of the bodybuilding world looked like he was carved out of stone. As in, you could grate cheese on his abs. He had a brutal, high-intensity routine to maintain his physique, and it put him in good stead for the handful of Mr. Olympia titles he won. But life for Dorian is very different now. Over two decades later, much of that muscle is gone, and Dorian lives a life filled with yoga, Pilates, herbal brews, and marijuana. He is an enlightened spiritualist in every sense of the word. When asked about his slender physique, he said his bodybuilding physique from all those years ago wasn't really him. Today, though, he carries all the tricep and bicep muscle injuries from his years of trying to maintain that figure. Number 11. Gunter Schleerkamp Many bodybuilders live and breathe the competition life. They spend every waking moment working on their muscle mass, and everything else comes second. But Gunter Schleerkamp is one man who had more than one passion, and he found a way to fit them all in. It's also fair to say that the Gunter you see today is quite a lot different than the one who first started bodybuilding in the late 1980s. Gunter, who is from Germany, entered his first Mr. Olympia competition in 2005. Here, he placed fourth. Uh, just want to let you know, you made my day. That means more to me than the placing. Oh. Thank you very much. He had also moved to the United States, married and divorced his first wife, Carmen Jorst, and then married an American personal trainer, Kim Lyons, in 2007. Gunter went by the nickname of Gentle Giant, and he had the mass to succeed. He weighed around 300 pounds during his competition season and up to 330 pounds during his off-season. He even trained with the famous Charles Glass to put him in the best condition possible to succeed. However, he still only placed 10th in the 2006 Mr. Olympia competition. In the same year, Gunter went from bodybuilder to actor. He played a role in the American film Beer Fest and did several TV commercials. Today, though, he doesn't have anywhere near as much of the bulk as he used to. Instead, he has a family focus, which includes his wife Kim and son Jake. Number 10. Chris Cormier Chris Cormier's then and now story is quite an exceptional one. He entered the world of bodybuilding as a teen and won Mr. California and Mr. USA titles that would put him on the path to success. From 1994 until 2006, he traveled the world, living a pro-bodybuilding career life that would make any aspiring bodybuilder extremely jealous. He worked hard, trained hard, and had his eye on winning the Arnold Classic. However, placing second six times in a row had a significant impact on Chris. Placing third at Mr. Olympia in 2002 was also something he struggled to handle. He became a party animal, and the nightlife would nearly kill him. But it wasn't until a severe back injury left him almost paralyzed did he begin to take stock of his life. He struggled with learning to walk again and was also in an induced coma for a month. Once he came to terms with the loss of his professional bodybuilding career, his life changed. He used his experience to train future stars, which meant he could give back to the sport that gave him everything. Number 9. Franco Columbu 
Weighing 185 pounds, it might be hard for you to believe that Franco Columbu was a talented bodybuilder. After all, most mass monsters in the bodybuilding world exceed 200 pounds. Still, Franco's strength and dedication to toning his body made him a massive success in the industry. He won titles like Mr. World, Mr. Olympia, and Mr. Universe, and he was also a talented boxer and powerlifter before he tried his hand at bodybuilding. Franco, even though he was quite small at 5 feet 6 inches, had a Herculean physique. He was also exceptionally strong and could pull 700 pounds. He was also good friends with Arnold Schwarzenegger, who he met at a bodybuilding competition in 1965 in Munich. His life in bodybuilding led him to a career in acting, often alongside Arnold. He appeared in Rambo First Blood Part 2, The Terminator, The Running Man, and Conan the Barbarian, just to name a few. Believe it or not, Franco also became a chiropractor and wrote books on nutrition and bodybuilding. He spent his later years of life in Los Angeles before he died in 2019 after falling ill in his home country of Italy. He was 78. Number 8. Sergio Olivia Sergio Olivia was a legend in the bodybuilding industry. He was so legendary that people didn't actually think his body was real. That's how he earned the nickname of The Myth. Sergio was from Cuba and was only allowed to leave his home country because of his talents in the weightlifting world. Following his move, he won Mr. Olympia three years in a row from 1967 to 1969. In 1969, he even beat the world-famous Arnold Schwarzenegger. His physique was one that many people aspired to have, even today. He had broad shoulders, a wide back, and a very small waist. According to records, his waist was the smallest in Mr. Olympia's history. He was reasonably short at 5 feet 10 inches and had a competition weight of 240 pounds. It's hard to speculate on the then and now of Sergio Olivia, for he passed away from kidney failure in 2012 at age 71. However, from the later photos of Sergio, he still appeared to have the same broad shoulders from his early days. His son is trying to fill his father's shoes and is expected to compete in the years to come. Number 7. Paul DeLay Paul DeLay's then and now story in bodybuilding is quite inspiring, particularly when you see how much effort he put into achieving his 285-pound bulk for contests. Look at him. Arnold Schwarzenegger is calling him monster. I don't know what I could call him. <laughs> Before Paul got involved in bodybuilding, he played in the Canadian Football League. But once he entered the realm of bodybuilding, it wouldn't take him long to get called things like Frankenstein and Jurassic Paul. The man was huge. He took first place in the heavyweight division of the North American Championships in 1991, then placed sixth in the coveted Mr. Olympia in 1993. The same year, he took fourth in his first ever Iron Man Pro Invitational. Paul put his body through extreme pain during this time, where he would drop to his off-season weight of around 330 pounds to 285 pounds during competition. His severe dehydration resulted in him freezing due to cramping on stage at the 1994 Arnold Classic, and he had to be carried off stage. He worked hard to get everything he wanted, including prizes, money, fame, and a career. But it was certainly at a cost. He retired from bodybuilding professionally in 2012, and now he works at the company he founded, World Beauty Fitness and Fashion Competition. Number 6. Frank Zane Many bodybuilders establish a career in bodybuilding and expect it to carry them throughout their entire life. While Frank had an impressive bodybuilding career, he made sure it wasn't the only thing he could rely on for money-making. Therefore, you might be quite surprised by the then-and-now life of Frank Zane. Frank always had quite an admirable physique. He had an intense exercise regime and was all about symmetry and proportions. 
so it wasn't all that surprising that he was a three-time Mr. Olympia winner. What was also quite impressive was that he had the second smallest waistline in the competition's history, and he managed to win his titles while weighing less than 190 pounds. Frank's name in the bodybuilding world is The Chemist, which might put all sorts of ideas into your head. The truth is, Frank has a Bachelor of Sciences degree, which meant he had a full understanding of amino acids and supplements. This would surely serve him well in the years after bodybuilding. Today, Frank is in his 70s and runs his own website. He also appears in seminars and book signings. Number 5. Larry D. Scott Winning the title of Mr. Olympia is something that any bodybuilder aspires to do. After all, it's one of the most elite achievements. It's hard enough to enter Mr. Olympia, let alone win it. Look at those arms. Look. My God. Larry D. Scott was the winner of the very first Mr. Olympia title. He also won the second. As a result, he was aptly called the Golden Boy and the Legend. Alongside his dashing good looks, Larry also had an incredible physique. He was very narrow and had managed to build width and the V-taper look that many people aspired to have. Once Larry had two wins under his belt, he retired from the bodybuilding world. He then made a comeback in 1979 before retiring permanently not long after. Once his bodybuilding days were over, Larry moved to Utah and focused more on his family. He also started a business in personal training, health supplements, and gym equipment. Even until the day he died from Alzheimer's disease complications in 2014, he still maintained an impressive physique. You won't know too many 70-year-olds with pecs that could crush nuts. Number 4. Flex Wheeler Flex Wheeler's life is far different than he could have ever imagined, especially if you compare what he was like to what he is now. Oh my gosh, jeez. Yeah. It's like my hood on my car. Nice. Flex was an American IFBB professional bodybuilder who has the title of winning the Arnold Classic four times, which was a record at the time. Arnold Schwarzenegger even described him as one of the greatest bodybuilders he had ever seen. The Fresno, California born and raised bodybuilder grew up in poverty but started bodybuilding as a teenager. He then had a short stint as a police officer before becoming a pro bodybuilder. He had a long list of awards throughout his career but was then involved in a near fatal car crash in 1994 which left him with paralysis. Flex eventually made it back into the bodybuilding scene, but was diagnosed with kidney disease and subsequently received a kidney transplant. In 2019, Flex lost his leg to circulatory vascular system problems. While amputation saved his life, it's left him with a lot of pain. There are days when he'll spend the whole day in bed, but he's determined to help and encourage others on similar journeys. Number 3. Jean-Pierre Fuchs If you haven't heard the name Jean-Pierre Fuchs, then you would have surely at least seen the video of him. It was a career ender and one that changed his life's direction forever. So easy. Eight, nine, and twenty. Jean-Pierre Fuchs was from Switzerland and started strength training at the tender age of 16. His parents didn't support him though, so he moved out and developed his passion. His debut onto the world stage of bodybuilding was in 1993, and he worked his way up the ranks to win some prestigious titles. He competed in Mr. Championships, Mr. Olympia, and the San Jose Pro Invitational. He even won silver in the Russian Grand Prix. By 1999, he had competed three times in Mr. Olympia. But his entire career would come to a dramatic end when he had a squatting accident. He was trying to lift the most weight he had ever lifted when his knees gave out. There are pictures all over the internet of both before and after shots. After his injury that ultimately ended his career, Jean-Pierre worked as a personal trainer in the United States. He also trained young bodybuilders to prepare them for sports competitions. Number 2. Kevin Levrone 
Kevin Lavrone had a long and successful career in bodybuilding, and even once he gave it up, he couldn't quite get it out of his system. I should have won in this Olympia. At the peak of his career, he held the record for the most wins by an IFBB professional. Ronnie Coleman then smashed that record in 2004. Still, you can't deny that 23 pro show wins is pretty impressive. After finishing third in the show of strength in Atlanta in 2003, Kevin decided to retire. But he didn't give up on his physique. Over the years, he worked on his body until he announced he would make a comeback. At age 51, he re-emerged on the professional stage, competing in the 2016 Mr. Olympia. He placed 17th in this competition and also entered the 2018 Arnold Classic Australia where he placed 13th. But outside of bodybuilding, he enjoys an average, everyday life. Kevin pursued an acting career, and he also led a band called Full Blown. He also enjoys sports like golf and tennis, and released a supplement line in 2015 called Kevin Lavrone's Signature Series. Number 1. Ronnie Coleman to look at Ronnie Coleman today, it's hard to believe he was once the king of modern bodybuilding. See that thing affect your traps or your chest any. Just <laughs> roll. Ronnie won Mr. Olympia eight times in a row, which led him to be called one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. He also has dozens of other wins under his belt and has been an integral part of the bodybuilding scene for decades, but at a considerable cost. Ronnie has a raft of health issues, many of which are a result of continuous training and multiple surgeries. He has also had 10 back surgeries, the latest of which was in September 2018 when he was told he might never walk again. Such is the stark contrast of his then and now life that there's even a documentary on his rise and fall. He has had to learn how to walk multiple times after going through hip replacements, disc decompressions, and numerous spinal fusions. The surgeries are not only taxing on his body, but his wallet. Each surgery cost between $300,000 and $500,000, which meant his last three operations alone cost nearly $2 million. Some of these bodybuilders underwent some huge transformations, but it wasn't always about going from slim to muscly. Some altered their lifestyle or their life direction too. Which bodybuilders change surprised you the most? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!